Hey everybody, I'm here today to show you how you can do some foiling with your stamps. I'm going to be featuring two Paper Diva stamps today. Here's a look at the card that I'm going to make, so let's go ahead and get started. So I've got my die cut machine out ready to go. I've also got a piece of Canson watercolor paper and a four inch circle die from a nesting circle set from Lifestyle Crafts. I'm going to put that down onto my paper and run that through my big kick. And then I'll go ahead and take this piece of Amber Rose glitter cardstock and I will place the largest circle, the four inch circle onto it, and then the next size circle down from it in the nesting die set, and I will nest that inside the larger circle. This is going to create a very thin and delicate frame. However, because this is such a sparkly paper, it's really gonna give a lot of pop to this card just with using a very thin frame. So I'll go ahead and use some washi tape to hold that down so it doesn't shift on me and run that through my die cut machine. And then I'll go ahead and pull this out and show you just how thin and delicate it is when you use just the next step down. Now I'm going to go ahead and take that four inch watercolor circle and I'm going to just use this very cheap set of watercolors from Michaels and put this dark maroon color down. I'm going to put quite a few layers on and really darken that up. Just a very messy wash of color. Now I've got a piece of maroon cardstock, and this is cut to five and a half by four inches. I'm gonna go ahead and use my embossing bag on it because I'm gonna be using Versamark ink. What I'm going to do is I'm taking this circle mask, it's really a stencil, but I think Stampin' Up! calls it a mask, and I'm gonna go ahead and put my cardstock on top of it and use some painter's tape on the back side to tape that onto it just so whenever I do some ink blending, I guess you would say, I'm gonna use my sponge tool there and put some ink down onto this cardstock. But I don't want my paper to shift, so I'm gonna tape it onto the back of it. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my mini ink blending tool and my Versamark ink, and I am going to sponge some ink on through this stencil and just lightly pounce it and blend it out. I really want soft edges with this, and you'll see that even though I'm using my ink blending tool and I'm sponging this on, I still don't get as soft as edge as I would like. So I'll peel this off and it looks good here. But once I get the embossing powder on, you will see how much ink is actually put down, which is a good thing for Versamark ink. You know it's going to hold your embossing powder very well. However, even the slightest bit of ink this stuck to. So it was just too much for me and too harsh of lines. I really wanted soft edges on all of this. So what I'm going to do to fix this is I'm going to come in with a paintbrush. And I started with this small one, and it really was it was creating too harsh a line still. So I ended up taking this very big soft brush, and I'm just going to pounce it directly onto this and knock off some of those harsh lines and those harsh embossing powder lines that I'm getting. And I want to create a circle shape to go along with my circle watercolor cutout that I made earlier. So I'm just going to keep pouncing this on and really just get some nice soft um, edges. So once I've got it the way I want it, I'm going to go ahead and take my heat tool and I'll heat set all of this. You want to make sure that you get this nice and melted. You want it all to be nice and shiny because anything that's not is not going to have the foil stick to it. So make sure it's nice and heat set onto your paper. And there you can see mine's ready to go. And then I'm going to take this deco foil from ThermoWeb and it's this amber rose color, very pretty, or rose gold I believe it's called. And I'll go ahead and put this over my paper. It's cut down to size already. And then I'll place that inside my carrier sheet. And this is just a piece of typing paper folded in half, nothing fancy. So I've got my laminator already out, ready to go. I've heated it up and I've got it on the highest heat setting. And I will go ahead and take my foil and shove that or put it through my laminator. Now when this comes out, it's gonna be warm. You wanna make sure that you let this cool off. And while it's cooling, I just take my finger and rub it over to make sure it's nice and pressed in the foil is, and I'll peel that off and you can see I've got a nice soft edge foiled background ready to go. So I was really happy with the way that turned out and I was glad I was able to achieve this effect with my foil. But now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move on to my watercolor piece. I've got the 
Be the reason someone smiles today. I love that sentiment. It's from Two Paper Divas. It's one of their new stamps. And I'm going to go ahead and take my embossing bag first and put that over my watercolor piece there just because I don't want any embossing powder to stick to the watercolor. So I'll go ahead and take my Versamark ink again and I will ink up that sentiment there. And I want to make sure that it's very well inked up. And I'll go ahead and stamp this down once. And I am using my Misty this time because I'm using watercolor paper. And I want to make sure that I get this completely covered. So I'm going to stamp it. I think I end up stamping it about three times actually. Maybe just twice. But I think I did three times just because I wanted to be sure that I got it. I got all my letters on there. Because watercolor paper is textured, it has a tendency to act up when you emboss on it. So I'm going to go ahead and take the same super fine detail clear embossing powder and I will sprink sprinkle that over my um, sentiment there and I'll knock off the excess. Once I've got all that done, I will go ahead and bring in my heat tool and heat set this also. Again, make sure it's nice and heated. You want it all the powder melted on there. No little stray powders. So once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and take the same um, rose gold foil that I used before and I will lay that over the top of the sentiment and I've already got it in my carrier sheet ready to go and I'm going to put this through my laminator again only this time because I'm using watercolor paper it's a heavy paper and anytime I've tried to foil with it 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 doesn't work out for me so I'm trying something new here and it it worked pretty well I had a few um patches that didn't want to put any foil on but it's okay it works out in the end and I ran this through once now this is a do it your own risk kind of thing um, but I went ahead and ran this through without my carrier sheet now I didn't have any problems however I wasn't worried about it because I've gotten stuff stuck in my laminator before and I'm the kind of person that can just take it apart and fix it myself but if you're scared about that, don't try this. Um, but you can see there, I went ahead and picked it up and showed you I didn't have any problems with this. But if you do and you're feeling in the mood to take it apart, it is easy to take apart and put back together. But I'll go ahead and pull that foil off. And you can see I've got a reasonably well-foiled sentiment there. I had a few spots that didn't want to quite transfer over, but I'm okay with that because this is a handmade card. So now I'm going to go ahead and start putting all the components together. So I've got my glossy accents out and I'm going to put a thin little layer of that over my frame there, my glitter frame, and I'll just lay that over the top of my watercolor circle. I'll go ahead and press that down and then I did sit uh, something heavy on top of that just to hold that in place. I've got some double sided adhesive that I have put on the back of my circle background foil there. And I will go ahead and stick that onto an A2 top folding card base that is white. So I'll just line that up in the middle there. And it is cut to 4 inches. So it does have white peeking out on both sides. Um, just a little something different on this one. And because I did have embossing powder all over this, I went ahead and took a baby wipe and just lightly went over that just to knock off any little extra that was left on there. Now I've taken a piece of fun foam and I've cut it down into a circle, adhered that onto the back of my sentiment circle, and then I'll just pop that onto the top portion of my background panel there. And you can see just the little bit of foil peeking out behind the foiled sentiment. And I will go ahead and pick this up and show you just how well this card shines. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I will leave you guys with just a few pictures. For more information and the complete supply list, you can visit my blog, craftingwellcaffeinated.wordpress.com. Thank you guys so much for watching and happy crafting.